What's up guys, Brian here with another Java game programming tutorial. So uh, we're going to take care of uh, a couple issues that I was not aware of. I mean, I guess I assumed that they would happen, but for some reason I kind of uh, forgot about that when we were coding, is that you can't actually have your enemies go along the edges of the screen. So none of the maze or the map that your enemies are following the path can touch the edge of the screen. Otherwise you'll get an error, which I'll show you right now. So you can see I've changed the map from last time and we have a little demo here. And like I said, last time you don't need to copy my map or anything. It's just for uh, demonstration purposes. So the thing that's happening here is we're starting right here in this little cross section and we're moving upwards, right? Because we always check up and then right and then down and then left, I believe. Uh, I know up is first. So they, they start here and they're like, can we go up? And the answer is yes, because this is a dirt tile. This is a dirt tile. So they move up. And eventually they get to the end where they reach a grass tile and they say we can't go any further. And because there's no turns up here, they say that's the end of the maze. So, and then you reach the end of the maze. So what I'm gonna do this time is I'm going to demonstrate, here's my map here. They start right here and they go up. And here's the grass tile. And then here's a dirt tile up at the uh, top of the level. So if I change this to dirt and connect it, so it goes all the way up to the uh, top of the level, You'll see the game can't even run. We get an error right away. Uh, index out of bounds, exception, negative one. And so why is that, huh? Well, we're gonna go over that. And just to show you the other side, a couple people had this error in the comments uh, of the video. And so I apologize for not predicting this would happen. Um, here's the right side. So I've connected the side to the right and I should probably make this grass so that way when they spawn, they'll say, all right, we can't go up. Can we go right? Yes. They go right, 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 right to the end of the maze. And we have index out of bounds 20. So some of you might be able to figure out why these numbers are the, the numbers that they are. Uh, so if we're going up, it's checking every tile, right? So if we go to our enemy class here, we have our find next C method right here, where we're finding the next checkpoint for to go to. And it's very, very robust. All we're saying is until a checkpoint's found, keep checking the successive tiles in whatever direction we're going. And there's no checks to make sure that that doesn't freak out. Um, so we're gonna add those right now because right now we're just checking and we're gonna keep checking no matter what until we find a checkpoint, even if the tiles don't exist anymore. Um, so on the boot class here, you can see, say we're going up here. Um, so I'll change that to a one and this to a one. I won't run it again, but we're starting here and we're like, can we go up? Yes, so we go up here. Can we go up more? Yes, 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 yes. So it's like saying, we started on dirt. This is dirt, 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 dirt. All the way up to here, this is dirt. And it says, what is this? I can't highlight this, but what is this tile right here? It doesn't know that this is the edge of our map. So that's what we're gonna be coding right now because right now it's checking what tile this is where the cursor is when it doesn't even exist. And that's why we're getting negative one when we go upwards because this is the zero with tile, first, second, third, four, along the y-axis, right? So up here is negative one. If we try to go to the right, then our, uh, our map, or at least my map, is 20 tiles wide, right? So you start at zero, going all the way up to 19, and then it says, what is this? And there's no 20th tile here, which is why we have our out of bounds, 20. So let's go back to our enemy class. And what we're gonna do is inside of our our find next C, find next checkpoint method, instead of our while loop, we're going to first check, before we check if our tile type is the same as the uh, each successive tile, we're gonna first check if, and from here, we're going to say if, well, actually, you know what we should do first is we should go to our tile grid. And there's a couple things we should add in this because right now we're using uh, hard-coded numbers in here and you really want to do that as little as possible and I mean eventually uh, along the games process we'll get rid of any actual numbers or at least as many as we can other than the uh, boot class we should just be initializing all of our hard digits in here and everything else should just be using variables um, so same with this we'll just probably replace 64 with like a uh, texture width and texture height variable but for now let's make two new variables in the tile grid class called private int tiles wide and tiles high. And I bet you can guess what these do. Instead of our constructor, we're gonna say this 
dot tiles wide equals new map zero dot length and this dot tiles high equals new map dot length and new map is the map that we're passing into the uh, tile grid class when we create it so if we go to our boot class here here's our map and we we kind of hard coded it we created it right here so this is the array that we're passing in here and uh, when we create our grid we make a new tile grid and we pass in this map so this is what we're taking we're taking the amount of tiles wide it is right and the amount of tiles high it is i'm not going to highlight this that's really annoying but that's where we're getting those numbers from and the reason we need to do this is because currently we have no way to check if our like when we get a tile uh, in our enemy class, we're using this get tile method that we created. And uh, in our tile grid class, all we're doing is we're returning the tile that we're asked to, right? So if that tile is like at the one X and the one Y, we'll go to our map and we'll go one over and one down. Well, actually, I mean two over because it goes zero one, but you, you know what I mean? And we'll return that tile. And we don't do any checks. So if we were to say, can we get the tile at, you know, 4x over and 30y down, we just be like, sure, here it is, we return it. And that's how we get these out of bounds exception errors because we're returning tiles that don't actually exist. So inside of here, we're gonna say, if x place is less than the tiles wide and y place, is less than our tiles high, then we can just return the tile because we know that that's a legal thing to do. We know that this tile exists, right? Because it's less than the total length of our, or width of our uh, map and less than the total height. So we'll just return the tile. Else, because we need to return something, that's why we had that error message a second ago. We're going to return a new tile and we're just gonna say, this is a throwaway tile, right? So let's go to our tile type class we haven't been in here in a while right and we're gonna make a new type called null and i'm just gonna use the uh, water texture for now we can create a a null texture later probably just make it black or something and so the null tile type is not ever going to actually appear in our game assuming everything goes according to plan the only reason ex it exists is for a uh, a placeholder for us to say you shouldn't be here, right? So the way we're checking our tiles is we're always checking within the confines of the enemy class, we're checking if our tile type is the same as another tiles type, right? That's all we're ever using the get tile method for pretty much is to check that tiles type versus another tiles type. And so the point of the null uh, tile type is we're gonna return this fake tile here that's at zero X, zero Y, zero width, zero height, it doesn't matter. And the tile type is null, which nothing else is, right? Nowhere else in our map has null tiles. It's all grass and dirt and water. So no matter what, it's gonna fail. So if we're saying like, is our tile the same as the 48th tile on the X coordinate? We're gonna check and instead of throwing an error and saying that that tile doesn't exist, we're just gonna return a null tile and say, no, it's not dirt, you know, or it's not grass or it's not water it's this other thing, so we're not even gonna bother going over there. But we're still returning something so we don't get an error message. I hope that makes sense. Uh, so let's go back to our enemy class. And we were inside of our, our while loop here. We're gonna say, uh, if the, let's see, what's the best way to do this? S dot, you know, we can actually just copy it from uh, down here if you guys want, S dot get X, right here. If that, is equal to, you know, in our tile grid class, we've created this private int for uh, tiles wide and tiles high. We need to create getters and setters now. So let's go to the bottom of the class within that last uh, semicolon though. And you can make them manually or whatever. I'm kind of lazier now. So just go to source and then generate getters and setters. Uh, we don't have them for map yet. We don't need that. Check uh, tiles high and tiles wide and click OK. And it'll just auto-generate these uh, get tiles wide, set tiles wide, get tiles high, and set tiles high methods. So now in our enemy class, make sure you save that, we can check 
if the tile we're about to check is equal to the grid dot get tiles wide or and I'll just go to the next line here s dot get y place plus direction or plus our y direction times counter is equal to grid dot get tiles high and we'll do stuff in here and then we're going to change this if to an else if uh, so for organization I like to keep those on the same line like that like you could have kept the if statement down here and just put else in front of it but I like to keep on the same line as the uh, closing semicolon here and then inside of this if statement that we just made we're going to say pretty much that we found it uh, in fact you can just copy this right here hmm you know I'm looking at it now and generally in programming if you're reusing a lot of code it means you're not doing things as efficiently as you could be um, so let's see this could just be one if statement now that I look at it so let's let's get rid of this sorry about that guys and just make it the the one if statement just like it was right when we first got into this uh, enemy class and before we're checking if the tile type is not the same as that or whatever we're gonna do our other check right inside the same if statement so we're gonna say if uh, we can again copy this this can be a huge if statement but it's still more efficient than doing two if statements if s dot x place plus direction is zero blah, 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 is equal to grid dot get tiles wide or s dot get y place plus direction at one times counter is equal to grid dot get tiles high or and then we have the original if statement in here um i'm pretty sure this is what we want guys i'm not positive but i think this is what we're uh, going for here so let's run it kind of nervous uh pretty complicated if statement here but let's run it and see what happens so according to this map what should happen is we're gonna go up and we'll see if we get that error message still we do negative one all right let's track it down tile grid at 46. we're returning this we're checking if it, hmm uh first off here i don't think this is going to solve our error but we should make the map like i said you don't want as little amount of digits as possible so we're going to make this uh tiles wide by tiles high which is the same as the numbers that were there but now if we ever want to change the length of our map it's just one less thing we need to change because it's all dependent on one another um so yeah let's see this error message tile grid at 46 we're returning the map and it's, we're, st we're still returning this oh because i see i see i see i see What we should be doing here is we should say and x place is greater than negative one and y place is greater than negative one because what we're doing here is we're we set it up so that we can't go like beyond the right side of the screen or the bottom side of the screen because those are like big numbers right bigger than our tiles wide and our tiles high but we also need to make sure we're not going off the top and the left by doing negative one all right, well, we didn't get an error, so that's good. Our enemies are moving, and uh, we'll see what happens when they get up to this top tile here. Uh, if all goes according to the plan, they should stop here, and it should say they reached the end of the maze like 10,000 times, so we'll see. All right, cool. No more errors. So now let's do our... Uh, I'm going to check my right side of the maze, which is slightly more complicated. And I'll speed up the enemies a little bit just because they're kind of slow from three to five. All right, so now they're going to the right, and you can see they have no issue going along this border now. So that fixes our problem, at least for that. And they should reach this spot right here and stop here. And they do. And I said before that we were going to fix this no direction found thing. Uh, I don't know if it was the last video or a couple of videos ago. Uh, every time an enemy spawns, we get this no direction found message. And really the fix, quote unquote, is we're just going to remove 
the printing thing, uh, the thing that prints it. And I know that sounds like, you know, like we're just kind of not fixing it. But if you think about what's going on here, every enemy at some point is going to get this message, right? Like at some point, there will be no further direction to be found. When it goes like in this maze, when the enemy starts here and it's like, it thinks ahead, right? It doesn't like wait to get to the corner before it detects it. it as soon as it starts, it runs all of this find next checkpoint, find next direction. It knows ahead of time where it's going to go as soon as it spawns, right? And so when it spawns, it's checking, all right, I can go to the right, then the next direction is down, then the next direction is left, and then here there's no direction, right? There's no place I could possibly turn to uh, other than where it just came from, which we prevent from happening so they don't bounce back and forth. So every enemy at some point is going to have a time at the end of their life where there's no direction found. So there's no reason to print this. This was like useful while we were like testing stuff, but not anymore. So we can get rid of that. And uh, yeah, I think that's it for this episode, guys. Uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Oh, I want to say thanks a lot for everyone in the comment section that uh, has been helping out. Um, first off, by bringing up errors such as this one, which I was not aware of until reading it. And then also, even more so, the uh, people that are in the comments helping each other out and offering possible solutions and stuff. I think that's really great. So yeah, shout out to you guys. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.